All right, we're back. As we always do, answering some cancer questions with Dr. Ravi Patel from the Comprehensive Blood and Cancer Center. Good morning to you, Good Dr. morning, Kiyoshi. Okay, a uh, pressing question about aspirin. We know it's good for heart attacks. We hear a lot of information about that. Uh -huh. What about cancer? Is aspirin good at lowering the risk of cancer? You know, uh, one of the mechanisms in cancer is uh, inflammation. So the inflammatory pathway triggers and changes cancer cells, mm -hmm. or creates cancer cells. So there's a lot of information about anti-inflammatory agents in cancer, and aspirin as such, two really good studies have shown that it reduces the risk in gastric cancer and colon cancer. What about other anti-inflammatories, things like Tylenol or ibuprofen? Any, any very, guess about that? Very good question. Actually, mm -hmm. aspirin and ibuprofen both were tested against each other, and aspirin won. Oh, okay. Uh, and aspirin is a natural preparation. It comes from the willow tree. You know? uh -huh. And it's like the older one, right? It's, older. it's like the, the original headache reliever there. Let's talk about another uh, supplement, selenium. A lot of people hearing about this when you talk about multivitamins, things like that. Is selenium good for treating prostate cancer? You know, uh, people initially thought it, and there was actually a study, a well-designed study, to check that out, mm -hmm. and it has not proven to be benefit and, uh, beneficial, and there's one problem. Certain people with a certain genetic makeup could develop a somewhat aggressive cancer if they're taking selenium. Oh. So I would be cautious about it. More important, September is Prostate Cancer Awareness Month, so if you're in the ripe old age beyond 50 or 50 like me, mm -hmm. then just be sure you get a rectal exam and a PSA and take low animal fat and uh, lots of fruits and veggies and tomatoes. All right, and uh, eating healthy always a good thing. Let's talk about genetic tests. Which is the best mail order genetic test for cancer? Is there such things? I didn't even know there was. No, it's a big market because you know there's about 20,000 genes in your body mm -hmm. and each gene has a different function and all of a sudden now people want to know if I have this gene, can I, will I develop this disease? And, and it's become a big market because people collect your saliva, you mail it in mm -hmm. and you get a result. Right. But not a good idea because I'll give you a simple example. If you are told that you do not have a gene for breast cancer, mm -hmm. you may stop doing mammograms, right? The, the fact that you have a gene which is expressed doesn't mean you're going to develop the disease or not develop the disease. Right, and there's multiple genes that affect breast cancer. So exactly, yes, breast and cancer. the multiple genes is an important thing because mm -hmm. one could switch everything off, you know, mm -hmm. which is bad or good. Right, it's, it's partly genetics, partly environment, right? Partly environment, and it's better to take the counseling or the advice of a good genetic counselor or a physician to really get an idea of what genetic test you need. When, what it means. Exactly. And what it means, exactly. Get some perspective on that. All right, Dr. Uh, Ravi Patel, as always, some great answers and important information, especially for people wondering about cancer this morning. Thanks so much for coming. Thank you. All right, we'll take another quick break. We'll be right back. And we are back this morning with Dr. Ravi Patel with the Comprehensive Blood and Cancer Center this morning, as we always do with the cancer update. Good morning to you, doctor. Good morning, Keith. Okay, it is great to see you. And, and uh, we've got some questions. You get a lot of common questions. The first mm -hmm. one we want to talk about this morning has to do with breast cancer and what happens when it travels or metastasizes to the brain. What kind of treatments are available for those folks? You know, uh, it's interesting. Next month is going to be Breast Cancer Awareness Month, and a lot of progress has been made in breast cancer. And uh, in the past, literally in the past three years, uh, a lot of hope for patients in whom the cancer has traveled to the brain. Mm -hmm. um, there's radiation therapy, which you can always give. There's st that standard radiation therapy. Then there's the cyber knife, which is a new way of delivering radiation to smaller areas of the brain if they have something going on. And then most importantly, there is a new medicine out now which came out in the last few years, which travels what is called the blood-brain barrier mm -hmm. and then goes to the brain and attacks the cancer. It's a medicine called Tycub, developed by GlaxoSmithKline. So there's still quite a bit of hope, and patients do get good mileage out of these new treatments. Okay, uh, the next question. Is there any research being done with complementary therapy for cancer? The problem is that, uh, you know, pharmaceutical research is funded by pharmaceuticals, and therefore it brings in a lot of revenue to do research. A complementary therapy is therapy which is given in addition to cancer, vitamins, supplements, herbs. People don't want to do a lot of research in that because they don't get funding, which right. is unfortunately not good. Mm -hmm. So th there is stuff out there. There is stuff out there, and I think that if people got funding, so sometimes the difference between powerful medicines and prolonging your life is only a matter of one month. Mm -hmm. So it's still important, but you know, who knows? Maybe the natural therapies can do that too, but we don't have those answers. We should get them. Put, put money into research, looking into that. Speaking of, vitamin D, uh, does vitamin D help improve survival in cancer? 
You know, there's more and more data that low vitamin levels, vitamin D levels, mm -hmm. are associated with a poorer prognosis and early recurrence of the cancers, particularly huh. colon cancers. So, you know, it's a good idea to get your sunshine in and mm -hmm. get the sunshine vitamin. And, uh, and then don't just take supplements. Get your levels checked, speak to your physician, and then take the vitamin D supplements. But the answer to the question is vitamin D now has been shown to be more effective in reducing the recurrence of cancer and getting better survival rates, particularly in colon cancer and now in breast cancer slowly, prostate cancer, pancreatic cancer. All right, interesting stuff all. And uh, a quick note, if you have questions for Dr. Ravi Patel, someone actually called in just a few minutes ago with a specific question, you're going to get back to them. Uh, email us to our website. There is a link for the cancer update on our website, kget.com. And one of your questions may be used eventually here. Dr. Ravi Patel might be answering that question because your question might be important to a lot of other people too. That's as well. correct. All right, Dr. Patel, it's always a pleasure to have you in. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Thank you very much. Take a quick Thanks. break. Be right back.